In previous chapter, you have learnt about particle properties of waves through photoelectric effect experiment which has been introduced by Albert Einstein. In this chapter, we are going to learn about theory that related to particle properties of waves. This theory has been studied by Louis de Broglie and has been confirmed by Davinson Engelmer through experiment. Curriculum specifications. There are two learning subtopics that we need to cover. 10.1 de Broglie wavelength and 10.2 electron diffraction. In 10.1, you must be able to state wave particle duality. Use de Broglie wavelength. In 10.2, we are going to describe the observations of electron diffraction in davinson gummer experiment. We try to explain the wave behavior of electron in electron microscope. And we want to state the advantages of electron microscope compared to optical microscope. Broglie's theory. From Planck's quantum theory, the energy of a photon is given by E equal to Hc over lambda, where E, energy of photon, H, Planck's constant, C, speeds of light, and lambda, wavelength of wave. From Einstein's special theory of relativity, the energy of photon is given by E equal to mc squared. And we know that momentum is mass time velocity. So here we have P equal to mass time with speeds of light, which is C. And then what we do is we are making the terms mc times with C. And we take the P substitute in this equation and we got E equal to PC. By equating equations 10.1 and 10.2, hence we got PC equal to HC over lambda. What we do is we cancel out the C on the left side and also the C on the right side. Then we rearrange the equation, make it lambda as our subject of the equation we got lambda equal to h over p. Where lambda is the wavelength of wave, h, Planck's constant, p, momentums of particle. The lambda and the momentum is represent different aspect. The lambda represent the wave aspect. The momentum represent the particle aspect. Wave particle duality. Lambda equal to H over P represent D Broglie wavelength equation. Thus, it shows that light has momentum and exhibit particle properties. This also shows that light is dualistic in nature. Some situations it behaves like wave and in others it behaves as particle. And this phenomenon is called wave particle duality of light. Based on the wave particle dualities of light, Louis T. Broglie suggested that matter such as electron and proton might also have dual in nature. Davinson Gummer experiment. According to previous suggestion by D. Broglie, Davinson and Gummer tried to prove it. They have done an experiment of electron diffraction using Teltron tube. This figure shows that the electron is used by Davinson and Gummer. This electron has been set up to a very high speed across anode and cathode and lead them to have a very high kinetic energy. And what happened is, 
a beam of accelerated electron that has been set up with high speed strike on layer of graphite which is extremely thin then we can see a diffraction pattern consisting of ring is seen on the tube face and we can calculate the wavelength of the electron that have been used by based on the de Broglie's wavelength equation lambda equal to h over p which is also equal to h over mv the spatials for this lambda is we can manipulate the size of the lambda by manipulating the voltage across anode and cathode next i will show you the demonstrations the effects of lambda when we change the voltage across anode and cathode this is an electron diffraction tube it's a standard piece of equipment that we can use to show the wave behavior of electrons now it's not used as widely as it might be but let me show you how safe and straightforward it can be to use this bit here is an evacuated bulb and the biggest risk of using this equipment is probably that you might break this if you don't handle it with enough care. At this end, we've got an electron gun, a heated filament which releases electrons, which are attracted to the anode here where they pass through a small hole and create a narrow beam which travels across the tube and strikes the fluorescent screen here. Now in this tube, we've got a thin sheet of graphite here in the path of the electrons and it's this which causes the electrons to be diffracted. Now, in order to use this we need an extra high tension or EHC voltage supply. I'm going to start by switching on the cathode which takes a little while to warm up but there you go you can see it starting to glow now which means you can turn on the high voltage supply and I'm going to turn that up to about 3000 volts. Now, what I hope you can see is a green dot surrounded by fainter concentric green circles. And that's a diffraction pattern that's produced as the electrons fly through the graphite. Now, you can increase the energy of the electrons by increasing the voltage. You can see that's changed the diffraction pattern. The rings are closer together. And that's because at increased energies, the electrons have a shorter wavelength and they're diffracted less by the graphite. Davinson Gummer experiment results. From the experiment, we can see that the size of the lambda can be manipulated by manipulating voltage across anode and cathode. And there must be a suitable size of lambda that we must use in order to produce the diffraction patterns on the tube phase. And the size of the lambda must at least approximately equal to the spacing between the plane of the atom which is lambda approximately to from the experiment we can easily see that the de Broglie's relation is consistent with the experimental results obtained with the electron diffraction tube the electron are not only behave as particle but it also behaves as a wave. So it shows here that Davinson and Gummer successfully prove the suggestion state by de Broglie's, which is proton and electron also dual in nature. And from this experiment, what we can see is according to the equation, if we increase the mass, it will lead to increasing of the momentum and when we increase the momentum it will lead to produce decreasing wavelength d therefore we can see that the diffraction effects are less noticeable with more masses particle because we can manipulate the momenta the momenta is much generally higher and so the wavelength is correspondingly shorter
advantages of electron microscope. Here's the equations of previous derivation. From this derivation, we can see that the electron can be accelerated to very high kinetic energy by manipulating the voltage across anode and cathode. And this will lead to change the wavelength of the electron. The wavelength of the electron become very shorter, much shorter compared to the wavelength of the visible light. As a result, diffraction effects of electron is be able to distinguish a details better than visible light. So, we can say that resolving power of electron microscope is much higher compared to light microscope. Resolving power is the ability of a microscope to differentiate between two close together objects. So what you can see here on your left side is the image produced by light microscope and on your right side is a very detailed image clearly that can be produced by electron microscope. So as a conclusion, electron microscope has higher resolution. Higher resolution means that the objects that are closer together can be seen as separate points and you can see a very clear image produced.